Hey guys, we are back in the forest and we found this waterfall. Totally gorgeous gorge. <laughs> A gorge gorge. Get it? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to paint again with gouache in my sketchbook and pr probably try to be talk you through this one a little bit more, I guess, or talk you through what I'm thinking as I do it. Um, hopefully it's helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed it or if you have any other questions or want to see anything else. Uh, yeah, anyways, let's paint. <laughs> well, this is what happens sometimes when you plein air paint. <laughs> My little palette paper got stuck upside down on that section, so... Oh well, we'll deal with it. Um, there's a beautiful waterfall and rapids way down below. We're on like the edge of this cliff, which probably looks scarier than it actually is in person, but it is really steep. Like we'd, we'd probably die if we fell. So we're not gonna fall. So no one worry. Wolfie will keep me safe and I will keep him safe. No, no funny business. Okay. And let's see, we're going to do it like this. So it doesn't tip as much. And I'm going to use less water this time. I had way too much water last time. I actually hardly ever use a full pan of water for this stuff. So all right, you start off with my bigger brush. Um, I decided I'm going to paint the rapids, um, the little waterfall section. So we're going to do some like reddish water pouring, sorry, trying to point, um, the reddish water that the sun is like shining through and you can see the reddish orange rocks, um, in this pool. And then it pours down into the waterfall and there's lots of white foamy bits and we'll paint some of these surrounding rocks. So we're going to be like zoomed into this area for this painting. Let me shift a little. Just throw down some color just to start off. Some lines. Maybe define that big edge. So let's move that up a little since that's my focus. And it pours down about right here. Let's say that. So it's really shadowy under those rocks up here. And warm. Oh my gosh. Already? Really? <laughs> if that's a sign of things to come, I may be in trouble. Let's get some of that orange in the water. And then we'll come back and kind of subdue it a little. Basically, the way I look at it is I'm painting the layers that I see. So I can see rocks under the water and those rocks are orangish red. Um, so I'm going to start off with that. Oh, and once again, I'm using a limited color palette. I'm using my yellow, red and blue. Um, and I also have white and black. So you can pretty much make all the colors with just those three plus white and black. Uh, so the it's just nice to do that sometimes to like simplify things for yourself. Okay. So back to what I was saying, I 
I can see rocks under the water. They're like bright reddish orange as the sun filters in and hits them. And so I'm painting those first, and then I can come back in and paint the surface of the water on top of it and the rocks around it. And it's like you're pa physically painting the layers that you see in person. And it's just, I think it works pretty well. There's a lot of ways you can do it, but I enjoy doing it that way. So now we'll define some of those shadows on the surface of the water. And I'm mixing my black. Um, oh, I also have some burnt umber. I forgot to say that. So just to make it a little faster. I don't want to sit here forever mixing colors, so having that burnt umber really helps. Um, but that's a really good color to use mixed with a little black and, and blue for the shadows on the water itself. I don't know when I figured it out, but a while ago I figured out. I was like, oh, the darkness in the water I see is actually more brown <laughs> than any other color. So if I work with brown and add a little black or add a little blue here and there, it turns out much more realistic. Um, and then after you do the shadows, you can come back in with some like foamy white um, dry brush with just like pure white and add that adds like all that glimmer you see down there on the surface of the water. So that would be the last layer. Uh, and you don't have, don't have to get it perfect the first. Even if I just have like hints of these brownish red yellowish tones in the edge that it's going to trick the viewer into seeing light coming through the water. So just to help myself stay on track, I'm going to do some of, I'm going to paint some of the shadows of the rocks to kind of define those shapes. And the, like I said, the last piece is going to be the water rapids, the white that you see down there. That's going to be the very last thing. Um, and actually, so on the shadows of the rocks, they're actually pretty uh, purplish blue. Like the shadows themselves are relatively purple and maybe even like a little pink because the rock itself is kind of pinkish, pinkish gray. So those shadows I'm doing, it's like a grayish rose brownish tone almost little bit of purple uh, and I'm just doing chunky chunky shapes right now uh, the rocks are like sort of smooth in some places and sort of rounded and um, or sharp in other places so there's water coming down. Right now I'm still trying to force myself to only focus on the shadows of the rocks. And by painting the shadows, I will have some of the highlights left over. And if I want, I can come back in with white and add more highlights. But just doing this will, in like sort of transparent layers, will help to find those rock shapes. It's, this is like a lot of fun doing these. Oh, oh I thought a bug fell in my hand. Uh, doing these rocky shapes are really fun. You can just kind of play with it here and there and you start to see like rocks form in the paper. Um, and I'm, I'm not staying like sh strict to everything I see in person. I'm kind of playing with the design of it as I see fit, but I do use it as like a major influence. So anyways, I will just paint for a little while and let, let you guys just hang out. <laughs>
and watch, I guess. It's getting windy. There's a guy swimming over there. Is that kind of where we were before? Is that towards where we were? Yeah. It's pretty deep over there. He's what? Oh, the tree swing. Yeah. We saw a tree swing back where we were before. And I really wanted to go swimming. But I don't, I wasn't prepared. And it's kind of too, a little too public to go skinny dipping. <laughs> so maybe we could come back prepared with my swimming swimsuit. All right, oops, I need my little strap to hold that. It's kind of too windy. I'm trying to still use my big chunky brush for as long as possible so I don't get too caught up in like little tiny details of the rocks. I want to get big layers. He's diving in with the tree swing. Oh wow. So yeah, I want to get big chunks of, of shapes down to start off and then come back and define anything I need to define later. Um, I'm going to throw in a little bit of warmth in the water down here and then come back and add the rapids like the white frothiness later. All right, and also let's do these um, rocks that are coming out of the water up here, which I'm gonna get a little thicker, bluish brown. I like using the blue and the brown because it already kind of adds a has a gray effect with a little red to make it a little pinkish pinkish purple um, but this is all going to be filled in because this is all in shadow so this whole rock back here is in shadow pretty much we want to emphasize the brightness right here so this background is just going to be kind of like quickly drawn in, quickly sketched in, and then let it fade off into the distance. Maybe a little bit of black over here because then we get closer to the foreground and it'll make it look even brighter when this is dark. There we go. So back here is all shadowy. And there's like big diagonal kind of striations coming up. So I can do some shadows. Thank you. <laughs> um, and kind of grayish bluish shadows. And then I'll come with a, back with a little bit of green because there's some greenish moss. And it's windy again. Okay, and so there are some shadows, oh sorry, reflections happening below these rocks. 
um, on the surface of the water, kind of right here. So I'm going to really, really, really loosely do some of that. I'm running out of space to mix. <laughs> um, I'm just going to like sweep a little bit of lightness because it's like a light gray shadow, maybe with some tinted color. Just like really quick. Only in a couple spots. Um, but keep it relatively dark. Just by the base of that rock. Sorry if it's a little wobbly. I have a ch you're on my chest mount right now. So... We'll let that dry. And I'm gonna get a smaller brush now. Going back to the pinkish tones for those shadows. Start painting in some of the little edges as they go down to the water I don't want to paint the water too light because then the rapids will not look bright and that's important. We want those to look bright. We don't want too bright the rocks to be too bright either. They're pretty bright like in person but um, if I make them a little bit dull, then again, it'll make the rapids look bright, and that's what I want the focus of the brightness to be. <laughs> it sounded weird. Oh, I just love the chunky shapes with these flat brushes so much. It's getting a little hard to see because of the sun it's like peeking around this tree now so to emphasize the brightness of the rapids i'm going to add in some really dark shadows just right here where those rapids are coming down before i add those in and i'm using my blue a little black a little burnt umber sorry i think raw umber I can't remember which one I grabbed. Probably raw umber, because it's pretty dark. Oh, this place is so gorgeous. There's a really sharp rock that point sticks up right here in the middle of the rapids. And I'm going to grab my big brush again. There is a relatively dark surface of the water right before that. So I want to make sure I capture that darkness. I mean, mine is very colorful. <laughs> which is, I love color. There we go. So now, when I come back in with my white, hopefully it will start to look like the rapids are raging and frothy. So 
So for now, I'm gonna get my brush kind of dry and I'm gonna load it up with the white and I'm just gonna like sweep it like, hor like parallel with the paper, right? Wherever I feel like I need that burst of brightness and that kind of wild, frothy foaminess in the falls. It's almost textural on this paper, which I love. It's really smooth until it comes down here around this rock. And I'm just gonna do a little at first. And then with my brush a little bit wet, I'm gonna tint it with like um, bluish brown again and sweep it in some spots. actually really shadowy right here so we'll add that in and it gets kind of brownish orange around there This, the water is super bright right here, and it's like showing how brown the water is. Uh, the sun coming through kind of shows off how brown the water is. some thick paint probably can see in the GoPro when I tilt it how thick it is and there's some swirling up here too kind of flowing around till it comes down and gets sucked down right here. It's almost, again, it's like almost textural. Just like some grayish tones in the shadows. Okay. I needed to like darken this area a little bit because it was too bright. It was bothering me. So We'll add a couple more shadows down here. And then come back and just add a little bit of some highlights. But again, the water is this is tricky, actually. Like, I'm trying to figure out how to make this look like the water's in shadow over here. So you, can, you can't see as much yellow. But it's, the water's still flowing, you know? So that's tricky. I don't have it all figured out, guys. But I just try things until it works. I 
and I'm going to stop touching it soon so it doesn't so I don't mess it up. Also, the lighting cha is changing really fast. So if I do it, if I paint for too long, um, I have I could potentially start. You almost start like trying to make up for things that are changing and then the whole thing you like lose the magic that you started with so that is one lesson I've I've learned the hard way <laughs> uh, and for me the magic in this scene is the brightness of this what of the light coming through the water right here so so yeah I think we should just call this one Maybe just a little shadow over here, because these rocks are casting a shadow. But then we'll be done. I'm, you know, I'm sure it's kind of hard to see, but I'll try to take a good photo as usual and share it with you guys. But I hope you enjoyed this little quick planner gouache session. It's absolutely gorgeous here. See, this is how much water I used. Not much. Just like one pan, basically. And I made an absolute mess in my palette, but that's okay. Didn't use my watercolors at all this time. Just the gouache. But I really love this sponge for keeping my palette paper wet. It helps keep the paint moist. Easy little trick. So yeah, I'll see you guys soon.